Yeah, I think you should start singing. <laughs> I think it's Putinesca because why would you have Kalamata olives? Yeah, but you could do and bruschetta like, if it was like a tom. Right, right, it's not a tapenade right now. But ooh, a tapenade! I didn't really think about that. That's what I was thinking of for a bruschetta. Like if we were to do something with that, with the garlic and the cheese, but to, the crushed tomatoes throws me off because like they're not diced tomatoes. They're it's more like tomato sauce. Yeah, but bruschetta is important to have some kind of like tomatoey thing. Um, the like, and like the wine would be great to flavor the meat, but otherwise, I'm like, is it really a full meal is what I'm a little concerned about. I don't know. Whenever I'm with Rock, I've never met Hungry, so. I mean, that's... <laughs> to be haven't, haven't met him. To be Meeting him online is a little <laughs> bit of a catfish kind of situation. Yeah, it turns out the person you've been talking to, that's not Rock. There's going to be a guest star appearing on the end. Really um, Gordon Ramsay yeah. pops up. <laughs> yeah. No, I definitely agree with you with the bruschetta. I just don't know how the meat and the olives comes into play. Yeah, and I mean, even the, the cheese. The, well, that's what I, the, yeah. I was thinking the cheese could go on top of it if you're putting it in the oven. Yeah. Like maybe it's a cheesy garlic bread and the olives have nothing to do with it and it's just throwing me off. Cheesy so. garlic bread. Or it could be something like a. I said this the other day, where like an open face sandwich. Mm hmm. Yeah, but he he did include that we need a cookie sheet for baking, so the bread's definitely going in the oven. Yeah. It's just a matter of what's the end result. Mm hmm. And we know that two there's two cloves set aside separate from four cloves, so the four cloves is obviously going to be cooked with the meat. And then the other cloves, I would assume, goes on the bread in order to make the garlic bread. Yeah, having it separate, that's what I mean, having it separated. Some of it's definitely going on the bread and some of it's definitely for the dish. Mm -hmm. I just, there's not a lot of olive oil. And if we're, but, he said butter, so the butter is probably the There's a lot of butter, yeah. Hmm. Well, who knows what we're about to make. And give people some time to get in, including the chef. Oh, the chef is here. It's booted up. Just about to explain to everyone what we're doing. Um, so I was trying to kind of figure out how we could give back, uh, as you know, with COVID-19 going on and everything, everyone's kind of hurting right now. Um, a lot of people have lost their jobs, too many people, and Rock and I were kind of going back and forth trying to figure out what we have in common and which group we could kind of do what we can to help people right. need that we're both connected to. Um, so what we came up with was I reached out to a whole bunch of people. I don't know if she's in here, but shout out to Jamie for putting me in contact with Alicia. Jamie! Um, we are basically going to cook for you. Rock sent me an ingredient list that I have prepared everything but i have no idea what we're cooking and <laughs> from from there hopefully if you're that's ready, typical you're dan <laughs> yeah I, I just follow instruction i'm really good at it for years we've been doing you've this. cooked for me before <laughs> so if people are entertained at the end of this uh we're asking there's a link in our bio hopefully you feel 
at least a little entertained and can spare a couple dollars, we are raising money for the Red Island Hospitality Fund. Um, it's the relief fund. That they're basically money is going to everyone that's bartenders, cooks, chefs, waiters, everything connected to the Great cause. Country. And the main reason we're doing this and that we chose Rhode Island, I don't know how many people know Rock in here, but Rock is located in San Diego. We've done a whole bunch of work together in the mm -hmm. past, and Rock got his culinary start at Johnson & Wales. So between me That's and right. I growing mm -hmm. up in Rhode Island, Rock starting his culinary journey here, we kind of felt that it was only right to give back to those people that sparked our love of food. Yes, and, and, I, and I thank you for bringing me in on this because uh, we, we still have a lot of connections at Johnson & Wales. Yeah. And um, so, you know, anything we could do, because I'm sure a lot of those people that are working in the hospitality industry in Rhode Island, you know, probably went to Johnson & Wales, you yeah. know? Yeah. Greatest more culinary more school around. That, for sure. My head is too big for this screen. Okay. It's called Tilt. Honey, we're live. Hi. Hi. Yes, Denise yes, said hi. Welcome. <laughs> Let's, uh, what do you say we get started, Dan? You're probably yeah. wondering what the heck kind of dish I uh, picked for you. Yes, yeah, so we were, we were kind of going through what you had us prepare. Okay. Uh, Nicolette and I had some, had some guesses. Uh, okay, throw them out there. Let me hear. First guess is, I think we're doing either bruschetta or garlic bread. I don't know. If well, that's well, part that's part of it. Yeah, the garlic yeah. bread. You we got that right. We get down the final final dish. Aside from I, my throw was that we're doing stir fry, but I'm not positive. So I'm, it's it's I'm close. Gonna I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to let it create. And reveal it at the end. <laughs> yeah. So you know, let's get started. The first thing um, you're going to have to do is uh, get your. Uh, well, we can. You know what? Let's do the garlic bread first, since you already okay. know that that what it is. So what you get? Nice, a nice loaf of Italian bread. Purchased at Dave's Market because we love Rhode Island. Lengthwise. I should I have been more lengthwise. descriptive. The other length. Yeah, a different length. I like my length. This way, you get, this way you get a nice, you know, a wide slice of bread, not individual. And then you only have to toast one side. There you go. Put that down the middle. Now, did you uh, make the butter warm, or not really warm, but soft? Yeah, it's been sitting on the counter for a while, so we should be good on that. Okay. It'll probably spread nice. Uh, spread it on top of the uh, both sides. I mean, there's a couple of ways to go. I mean, you can melt it in a pan, throw the garlic in, cook it up a little bit if you want, with a little oregano and a little olive oil. But this is, this is like the easy method. How do you prefer it? Well, for for you, <laughs> no, don't take that the wrong way. Um, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. You could uh, spread it or pick that. Yeah, way. just spread it. Just spread it like you're, you know, yeah, you're, you're making bread toast in the morning. I don't do that. I don't wake up in the morning. Okay, that's right. You don't need toast either, do you? <laughs> Uh, Dan, your sister wants to tell you that it's a bit early to be struggling with the instructions. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> the I'm, I'm encouraging it. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We'll spread it out. You don't have to, uh, you know, you're not painting the house. Just get it on there. Uh, and then. So, uh, I'm trying to do my best here. But... Spread it, Dan. I'm you to spread it, Dan. Spread that. Spread thing. it. Yeah, there you go. The butter, too. <laughs> then put then put that spread that garlic on there. Atta boy. Make sure that how how uh minced did you do the garlic? How minced it's very fine. Nickel okay, up. perfect. Nickel Make up. sure you spread it out and it gets cut you know, stuck into that butter so it doesn't fall off. And make it even all Ooh, the way. Oh, perfect. Did nice. And then a little uh what do you have? Some shredded parmesan? Yeah, we do. Bring that on there. Oh, so good. So if you put a little Parmesan on there, put that on a cookie sheet, and we're not going to cook it just yet. That will be the last thing you do. Okay. You want me to preheat the oven? Yeah, you put it on a cookie sheet, piece of foil on it if you want, so you don't have to wash, and then turn the broiler on. Nice. We'll get that sucker hot. We need it hot. So you feel the heat coming through that pan? Because that pan takes a little while to heat up. Uh, it's getting hot quick. Okay, so let's do this. Let's get that olive oil in there. Sounds good. Enough to coat the pan a little bit. Let's get that garlic. Let's throw that garlic in. You're only going to cook it for 30 seconds. Make sure you have a, 
a wooden spoon to mix it around so that they don't burn. Do you remember what I taught you about garlic keep when you moving. cook it? Keep Do you remember? Keep it moving. Keep it moving and not more than 30 seconds because you're going to cook other ingredients in there. But if it's just the oil and the garlic, once it starts getting beyond brown, it gets bitter. Right, it'll so ruin, ruin your dish. Cook so put it in. And, yeah, put it in there and move it around, Dan. Make it dance. That's the plan. You know I love dancing. So once that's starting to move a little, that's about 30 seconds. Uh, you can throw the onions in. Onions and the mushrooms. You got about... And keep it cooking. Onions. Yes. Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Do you have uh, enough oil in there? Did, I didn't see how much you put in, in the, at first. Um, use that sock-covered oil that looks like mustard over there. Um, fun fact, my mother keeps uh, oil oh, in a uh, mustard container. Well, you know what? I, it's very creative. Just don't put it on your hot dog by accident. Yeah, no, not as tasty. The show is brought to uh, if we ever get sponsored. Is it? Is that Nike? Yeah. So you, it's so you have Nike oil? It's an old sock. <laughs> hey, actually, I like that. I like that. So, uh, if you remember correctly, uh, Dan, from my years of tutelage uh, with you, uh, the uh, onions and the mushrooms. Remember when the, what the word saute means? It means to jump. So basically, keep everything moving around, yeah. and uh, you'll see them start to cook. They'll cook down. They'll get translucent. Say, we're, not, we're not sweating here. We're sauteing. Not, not, no, exactly right. Because it, it, what happens when you sweat? The liquid comes out. We don't want that. So is it, you can hear them sizzling. I can hear the sizzle now. So if you want, you can throw that a little more. Yeah, you'll see mushrooms are very absorbent. So when you're sauteing mushrooms, that's why you want to do them on high, because they'll just keep soaking up that oil. Uh, you keep them bouncing around. And, well, here's the magic part. I can see some uh, steam coming off of uh, the pan now. It's looking yep. pretty good. Yep. Good. Now you have your meat. You trimmed it up. It looked pretty nice. That's what we're working with. Yeah, so if you want push, I would, for now, just push all the onions and the gar and, uh, mushrooms to oh, one nice. side a little bit. Because right. you still want to cook them with this in there. But you want to make sure your pan's on high heat. Can I throw meat in? Yeah, throw a little squirt out oil in there. The bottom looks a little dry. Sponsored by Nike. Just, just where you're going to cook. <laughs> yeah, put the dirty sock in there. Everything. There you go. <laughs> oh, <that> looks good. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Put that meat in there and spread it out, but don't pre don't press it down. Yep. Bada bing, bada boom. Oh, that look that looks good. Can you smell it? Oh, uh, you know what? I, I can. It's not working. So you want to keep that on there. You know, yep. you want to get a little sear on it. So you keep let it sit there for a little bit, but you got to make sure that heat's on high, bro. Um, right, one thing that's, that yeah, one, one thing that's actually pretty cool is that when you, uh, are, you could take that meat out and let it sit a little bit in almost room temperature before you cook it. Because when you put that cold meat, like right out of the fridge into a hot pan, it brings the temperature of the pan down and you're not going to sear. Oh, you're yeah. going to kind of steam a little. Keep moving it around now. So yeah. we don't want to see that liquid in there because what happens is uh, the liquid in the meat will, will come out a little bit if it's not hot enough. So keep turning and moving it. And then when it looks like it's brown on all sides there, Dan, yep. uh, mix in the onions. So the meat is looking good. So you can blend that in there with the, uh, the onions so they start to get those flavor profiles yep. blending yep. together. So try not to make it too mushy. I mean, it's yeah. hard to tell in the, in, in the view. Yeah, just let keep cooking. And, uh, yeah, and that's nice and hot, and it's looking good. Nice. Here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to, Dan, you don't want to cook it all the way through right now. Keep it on a high heat, uh, only because you still have other ingredients to put in there and some simmering to go in with a sauce. Yeah. So you don't want to cook it, like, well done right now, because if not, you know, if you finish – this dish in 10 minutes, 
you know, it's going to be real dry meat. Yeah, you, you know, don't, you, you don't want our bread to be cold. You don't want to overcook it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I noticed you had a little wine in that bottle, in that, in that little jar. Yep. Add it. You got to deglaze it. So you're going to, so when you Pop deglaze a pan, it could be with any kind of liquid, but I like the red wine because when it reduces, it gives it a, that meat a real rich flavor. Uh, the red wine gets condensed down. So as long as that pan is nice and hot, you can pour that red wine in there. And what that'll do is it'll steam a little bit, and it's going to pull all the little goodies that are stuck on the bottom of the pan. Yeah. And when that happens, that is enhanced flavor. It's going to pull up all those goodies. We're going to create a sauce Fine. right in there. Yeah. And then just move it around so it coats the whole bottom. Yep. <laughs> so now that you cooked some of that red wine out a little bit, yep. now you're going to add the tomato sauce. All right. And are you using like a pureed tomato? Is that what you got? Yeah, it was crushed, crushed red tomatoes. Crushed red tomatoes are good because we already have oregano. We got garlic. It's like you're making sauce right in the pan. So pour that in. Mix that around so it all blends with all the other flavors. You have a couple other ingredients to add there, right? Yep. We still got a lot of spices, and we got our olives. Yeah, put the olives in now. Okay. You could put in the, um, what do we have, a little parsley, right? You already put that in. No, I got that stuff. A little crushed red pepper. Crushed red pepper, salt. And salt and pepper. Now, remember, if you don't want it hot, don't put in the crushed red pepper. Oh, we like it spicy here. But, but we do, and I, and I know that, Dan the man. <laughs> so now, you want to turn on your broiler in your oven? It is on low. Is that okay, or do you want to on high? Uh, you know, um, I don't know how hot yours cooks. Is it gas or electric? You got gas, right? Yeah. Dan, always brag that you have gas. <laughs> oh, I learned that from you in Philly. Yeah. <laughs> Don't stand behind me. Anyway, uh, uh, low, low is okay. Put the bread in. Just make sure it's not so close. Is it uh, in the door or on the bottom? Let me see. It's on the top. Okay. You know what? That's good. Slide your bread in there. Try to keep it all, all in there underneath the uh, flames. I mean, normally I would say hi, but, you know, you guys can watch it. And I've had it on for the past 10 minutes. Oh, so it's hot enough. Yeah, so you want to just toast the top of that bread. And low is good because it, it, it'll warm up the bread as well without making it dry out. So, Dan, how's that sauce looking? I can't really see it. Let me see. Taking it up. We got a couple little watery areas, but aside from that, it looks good. No, but you want, you want some sauce. Yeah, you don't want to yeah, dry it out. Yeah, yeah. It so, it, so it's looking good. You can turn it off. Okay. Because you can have what you call carryover cooking. You know, that's going to still cook while it's uh, while it's in that pan. Especially that cast iron. Man, that'll keep it hot for like an hour. Yeah, feel free. You could add a little salt, a little pepper. Always remember you could put more in. You can't take it out once you put it in. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, I see a lot of people's over-season at the beginning of the cooking process. I've been, and then it's a little late after that, uh, you know. I think I've been watching a lot of things between YouTube and Netflix and all that. Do you always, like, I, I've seen a lot of mixed reviews. Do you season before you put food in the pan, or do you see it, wait for it to heat up? And I'm like, I've I wait. In, in a dish like you're making, I would, I, I, I would, I, what I like to do is if, uh, in a dish like that where the sauce cooks out a little bit, I season it up at the end. Because pepper has a tendency to get really hot if it's real good pepper, the longer you cook it, black pepper. Uh, also, the crushed red pepper releases a little bit of heat. Uh, and then you don't want to over-salt it. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, check that bread again, because once it starts to caramelize and get dark, it happens real fast. It's starting. It's starting? Is it yeah. starting to turn a little light brown? I can't yeah. really see. There's not a little light in there. But... I'll pull it out. Where's your uh, broiler one out? Um, no, I don't think the broiler went out. I, I just can't see light. No. I got it. Oh, it's yeah. getting all... Oh, that's looking good. That's perfect. Take it out. Right. 
Yeah, you don't want to overcook it, and it gets like a rock. Take notes. You know, yeah, yeah. And not that's a bad <laughs> thing. You know what I'm talking about over here. No, it's um, that's perfect. Speech. Um, hey, can you tell us an alternative protein if we don't have beef or we don't yes. have beef? Yes, actually, um, this would be good with, I mean, um, obviously, if you don't eat meat, a lot of times you, uh, no retirement for me. Yeah, uh, if you don't eat beef, uh, maybe you don't eat pork either, you know. Uh, this could work on chicken. Mm. This would be a great chicken dish. It would almost be like a kitchen a chicken cacciatore. And I would go with bowlers chicken. We asked, you know, and obviously it would be chicken you could put in there. But I, I made a similar dish last night. Hello. I made a similar dish last night with eggplant. So I put eggplant in there. I diced up the eggplant, sauteed it up with mushrooms and onions. Same type of thing. I made the little sauce. And it was delicious. You can do it with tofu. I mean, if you like tofu. What the heck? Hey, you know, I got another question here uh, from Mr. Valley. You could use fish. Uh, yeah, you can use fish. I would use something that's a little heavier duty uh, with that will stay together when you cook it. Uh, but I would do uh, the procedure a little different. I would do the uh, the onions and the mushrooms, push it off to the side, and have room to cook the fish. But I would use like a, maybe a swordfish or a halibut, uh, something a little sturdier, uh, and then cut the fish up into pieces first. So I take those up and then pull them out. Then put the sauce in, make the sauce with the uh, the wine and the uh, tomatoes. Simmer that down, then add the, the fish back in at the end, and don't mix it around. Just get it coated in the sauce, and then put that over. Oh, that would be awesome over uh, you know, some uh, fettuccine. Again, we were doing this all kind of, we're going to do this weekly. Brock's just going to keep sending me a shopping list. I'm going to sure. keep not knowing what we're making. Um, but the ultimate goal here is to raise money for the Rowan Hospitality Relief Fund. The right. link is in our bio. Uh, huge thank you to Alicia for setting us up and allowing us to partner with them. And we hope that you enjoyed episode one of the 1-800-CHEF Show. Thank you. Good job, Dan. Let's do it again.